Luke chapter 18 deals with persistence in prayer, highlights the dangers of self-esteem and the hindrance of wealth. Verses 1 to 8 deals with persistence in prayer, which talks about uh, the widow and the judge. Now this parable, like the previous one, deals with prayer. But here the issue is with the content of the heart as one prays. This parable serves as a rebuke as it is addressed to those who were confident in their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. Uh, the Pharisees are the specific target in Jesus' audience. Now, we are not told where in the temple they were praying, but since both were men, we probably may think that they were praying in the court of Israelite men, between the court of women and the court of the priest, located just to the east side of the temple. Now, I want to speak to you this morning about uh, the pride of the Pharisee and the humility of the tax collector. Uh, the Pharisee was self-righteous. He was boasting in his religious practice and he despised others. He was using other people as his standard for measuring for righteousness. The Pharisee is sure that he is a blessing to God. In fact, his prayer starts out like a thanksgiving psalm in which God is praised for something he has done. But the form of the prayer is perverted because the occasion for the thanksgiving is what he has done for God. In other words, he's saying, God, I thank you that I'm so marvelous. In his own humble eyes, he is not unrighteous. He fasts above and beyond the call of duty twice a week in contrast to one fast a year on the day of atonement required by every Jew. He gives tithes of everything he has. He makes no request to God. He offers no honor to God. This religious man has done it all. After reading his prayer, we wonder whether God should apply to work for him as his assistant. In contrast to the Pharisee, the tax collector knows he is approaching a holy God, a great and unique being. This man comes with fearfulness. From a distance, not lifting up his eyes to heaven, he beats his breast in an obscure corner to reflect his contrition. The tax collector knows he is a sinner. The Pharisee is confident in his own righteousness. The contrast could not be greater. The tax collector asks for mercy. He desires to improve on his spiritual health and not dependent on his personal achievement. The tax collector used God as his standard for measuring righteousness. He realized that he had to throw himself at the mercy of God's forgiveness. He expresses repentance and humility in what he did. He was broken, penitent, and contrite in heart. The Pharisees' pride condemned him, whereas the tax collector's humility saved him. Our prayers must include two essential elements. One, persistent based on God's character and you find that in Luke 18, 1 to 8. And second, we must be penitent with a contrite heart. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Now, this is when Solomon has finished building the temple 
and he's praying to God that when his people come to pray in the temple, he should listen. And this is what God says to Solomon. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. This is the heart of prayer. So, do you think there is hope for the Pharisee? Of course there is. In fact, one of the most self-righteous and rule-driven Pharisee was saved by God's mercy. And here is something that Paul said after he had received God's mercy. He says, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I am the worst sinner of all. Like Paul, we must know that we have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But Jesus came into the world to save us. Salvation cannot be earned. All we can do is to be like the tax collector in the temple. Recognize our own need for God's mercy. Because without the mercy of God, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. Like the tax collector, we should understand that we have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and we need his forgiveness. God promises that if we recognize our need for his forgiveness, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. My dear friends, Humble yourself, therefore, under the throne of Almighty God, that in due course He may lift you up. Let's pray.